It is an atomic bomb. It is a harnessing of the basic power of the universe. The force from which the sun draws its power has been loosed against those who brought war to the far east. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. We are now prepared to destroy more rapidly and completely every productive enterprise the Japanese have in any city. We shall destroy their docks, their factories, and their communications. Let there be no mistake, we shall completely destroy Japan's power to make war. On August 6, 1945, President Harry Truman fulfilled his promise and dropped the first atomic weapon on Hiroshima. In minutes, half of the city vanished. 60,000 to 70,000 people were killed or missing. 140,000 were injured, and many more remained homeless as a result of the bomb. Deadly radiation reached over 100,000. Of Hiroshima's 90,000 buildings, over 60,000 were demolished. The U.S. dropped another atomic weapon on the city of Nagasaki. Ten days later, Japan surrendered. The news of this new weapon stunned the world, but then governments such as the Soviet Union began to design and construct their own atomic weapons. By 1952, three countries were in possession of nuclear arms. Soon, a conflict arose between the public, who was terrified of nuclear annihilation, and the government. The people formed groups to voice their opinion on the issue. One major group during this time period was the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, which was for formed in 1958. I think the, the original goal is sort of, yeah, as it says in the title, nuclear disarmament, but that meant both um, British nuclear disarmament and then also by the other the nuclear powers that existed when it was founded, so the um, USA and USSR. In February 1958, the group held their first meeting in London. The turnout was so huge for the inaugural meeting of the CND that the hallways of the meeting place were overflowed and people were forced to listen to the speakers from the street. To further get the message of unilateral nuclear disarmament across to the people, an Easter weekend march was organized. Thousands attended the march, which spanned from Aldermaston Nuclear Weapons Manufacturing Facility to Trafalgar Square in London. Um, I think that well, the marches have been a really good way of drawing attention to the issue in that the, the production of nuclear weapons, which happens at Ultramaster, is something that is very you know, much a, an ongoing, slow process. These marches also introduced the new CND logo, now known as the peace symbol, which grew prominent throughout the world. The symbol was based on the flag signals for N and D, standing for nuclear disarmament. This new emblem helped to drastically spread CND influence and to promote the message of nuclear disarmament. At this point in history, governments were furiously testing their nuclear weapons to the point where the public became unsettled. Governments knew that if they did not have the most up-to-date nuclear weapons, they would have a military disadvantage, especially during the heat of the Cold War. So testing was necessary in their eyes. But to the eyes of the CND and the anti-nuclear movement, Testing was causing harmful health effects to the public and promoting nuclear proliferation. The main concern, though, was of the nuclear fallout, which caused radiation sickness. The fallout affected the entire world in the form of radioactive dust that entered the stratosphere. The direct cloud of fallout could span to a cloud 50 miles wide and 200 miles long. In one incident, a Japanese fishing boat was caught directly in the fallout. Five men needed to be treated for radiation poisoning, and one died. After five years of protest by the CND, the US, Britain, the Soviet Union, and many other countries agreed to sign and ratify the Limited Test Ban Treaty in 1963, a huge compromise between the people and the government. In the, in the 60s, there was a pressure, and that was, that was significant pressure on the, on, on the nuclear weapon uh, states to stop uh, atmospheric nuclear testing. So that was in the 50s, actually. And that was eventually, uh, I mean, that was driven uh, partly by sort of military, quote-unquote, considerations, and uh, but a large 
commercially, the the push for for nuclear atmospheric nuclear test ban actually came from the public that was concerned about the effects that those weapons uh, those tests have on on the on the health. Continued anti-nuclear campaigning put pressure on governments to stop more countries from attaining nuclear weapons. Demonstrations in the U.S., Britain, and throughout Europe began to draw the attention of nuclear arms to the public once again. Demonstrators handed out pamphlets, gave speeches, and marched on Aldermaston Weapons Base. The anti-nuclear groups in the CND were now worried about a new issue, nuclear proliferation. In the 60s, more and more countries desired nuclear capabilities. By 1960, France had already detonated their first nuclear weapon and gained full nuclear capability. Then, in 1964, China joined the nuclear club. Anti-nuclear activists were worried that if there were more countries with nuclear weapons, there would always be a higher possibility of a nuclear attack. But governments without nuclear weapons felt that it would be unfair if only a select few countries were allowed to have nuclear arms, while they were not. During the mid-1960s, CND membership drastically declined due to many members leaving to protest the Vietnam conflict. They also chose to leave because of the new test ban treaty, which gave them a short-term sense of security and safety. Despite this sudden dive in membership, the CND and other anti-nuclear groups survived. Then, through continued public pressure, the United Nations Atomic Energy Commission created the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in March of 1970. The main ideas of the treaty were for countries without nuclear weapons to remain in that state, and for countries with nuclear weapons to work towards disarmament. The treaty was built not only to prevent the spread of nuclear arms, but to try to begin to reduce their numbers as well, which was a huge compromise between the CND and nuclear states. Unfortunately, three countries were already in development of an atomic weapon and refused to sign the treaty. Fortunately, you have governments that are seeking the bomb, so they think it will provide them national security. Um, so that's why you have this detention that you do between the desire to acquire weapons and the desire on our part to get rid of them. The Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty was a huge success and halted the spread of nuclear weapons. But the United States and Soviet Union continued to build weapons, all of which grew more destructive. The two countries built massive quantities, which caused CND membership to spike at an all-time high with 100,000 members in 1984. The arms race peaked in 1986, when there were a total of 65,000 nuclear weapons worldwide. After the Soviet Union fell, the CND put pressure on governments to remove missiles from Europe and to disarm. Governments compromised with the people, and in turn, disarmed a huge portion of their weapons, going from 65,000 in 1984 to 25,000 in 1994. As the number of nuclear weapons trickled down, so did CND membership, which declined during the 90s. In recent years, the Cold War mentality of the need for excessive amounts of nuclear weapons has been pushed aside by groups like the CND and huge disarmament accomplishments have been made under the command of President George W. Bush. President Bush, when he came into office, ordered that the uh, United States should cut the stockpile in half by 2012. And we've actually done that um, by the end of last year. By December, we have already cut the stockpile in half. After 50 years of action, the CND has left their mark on history. The anti-nuclear movement clearly had many compromises with nuclear states, with accomplishments like the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty and the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Today, the CND and other groups still campaign and try to achieve their goal of a world without nuclear weapons. I think that they have been part of the universe that have been, uh, you know, moving uh, policymakers to think about what are our options. Uh, and I think probably uh, they are among the motivating factors uh, for a comprehensive review as to where is our security today? Do we really need uh, the nuclear weaponry that we have today? Can we take actions that would reduce it and induce others in the world to join us? We've had a lot of successes over the years. We no longer blow up nuclear weapons above ground. Um, so together, we need to put pressure on government to do the right thing. It's not rocket science, it's, it's being responsible.